back. Today I'm going to show you how to create this horizontal scroll bar in React um, just using JavaScript and then a bit of CSS as well to style it. And as you can see here, I have an example app, um, which is actually sort of a working on my blog at the moment. Um, and we can see here as I start to scroll down the page, um, you know, a horizontal scroll bar goes from left to right um, all the way along. And then as I get towards the bottom, it hits the end there, it doesn't go over. Um, it's sort of based on how, how long the page is, I guess, the actual total height. Um, yeah, so it's really quite a cool little effect. You know, you might see it elsewhere on other websites, um, particularly long form content where you know, there's a lot of text and images, so it's just a nice visual representation of sort of how far down the page the user actually is. Um, you know, I think it's just a nice thing to add to some sites. So what I've done is I've spin up, um, you know, a new Visual Studio Code instance here, and we've got our Create React app as well, which I've just um, added to a new folder. So go ahead and do that if you haven't already. Um, and I'm just gonna run npm run start, and that should start the local development server and then more, you know, sort of be presented with the default uh, React screen, which I'm sure if you're watching this video, you sort of be um, familiar with. So it's nothing going to be sort of too complex. There's more just a few just JavaScript calculations we need to do, um, depending on, you know, sort of how calculating basically the um, sort of how far down the user has scrolled, how far down they can scroll. And then also essentially we're setting a width to the this bar here that's going across um, and updating that dynamically with a use effect hook. So we're not using any state or anything, it's just a use effect hook. Um, and that's kind of the only reacty part of it. But yeah, I thought I'd make this video anyway because it's slightly different to my uh, just pure HTML, CSS and JavaScript version. And also I realized when recording that, actually the audio is a bit off as well. Um, so I'll probably point people to this video. You don't need to know React um, because all of the, the actual JavaScript or the code that powers the, the horizontal map bar here, um, that can be applied to you know any project really that uses JavaScript. Um, cool, so we should have this open here. You can see it's on my other screen. So let me just bring that over. And there we go, we've got our spinning React logo. Um, I'm not going to do any cleanup. I'm literally just going to create a, uh, yeah, let's do a new folder and we'll call this hor uh, actually, yeah, components. Let's have some sort of proper way about it. And I'll put that in the source folder. And then in components, we'll add the horizontal uh, scroll bar, like so. Um, sorry, that should be a folder as well. So let me, I don't know if I can change that. No, let me just delete that um, and I'll create a folder for that. So um, horizontal scroll bar, like so. And then inside there, we just want two files. So let's do um, horizontal scroll. And actually, I'll have that as uppercase. So horizontal scroll bar. Dot, uh, JSX will do for that because it will be a you know a JSX component, and then as well horizontal scroll bar dot CSS, not SCSS. We'll just do CSS. Um, of course, you know these CSS styles are really quite basic, um, and you can apply them to sort of any styling methodology that you're using. Um, obviously, not exactly sure tailwinds. You might need to sort of have a look at that, but certainly if you're using SAS or um, styled components, which I like to use, um, it'll be very easy to um, yeah code those out. Cool. So just on this, and to begin with, I'm just gonna remove all of the existing styles. So from our index.cs and our app.cs as well, I just want everything gone. Um, that probably just give us this a white static logo, that's fine. And then actually yeah, in our app.js, I'm just gonna remove everything between uh, this div here, um, and actually all we're going to return, yeah, we'll, we'll have a class name of app, let's say, and then we want to return our horizontal scroll bar, like so. And this might auto import, um, but if not, I just need to do that here. There we go. Is it going to do it? No. Okay, so let's just import that. Uh, and actually, we don't actually have anything exported from here, so there's nothing to import. So um, I have a 
really good extension enabled. So it's called, um, what's it called actually? It's, I think it's like React ES7 Next Snippets. Um, where is it? This one over here. Uh, really good. It's, you know, 5.7 million downloads. So it's, it seems to be working well. Um, and that allowed me to do that RAFCE. And here we've got a React Arrow functional component. Um, that's also, you know, export default as well. Um, so now we should be able to import that in our app.js. So let me try this now. Let's grab that. Stick that in there. From, do we need to go up? Um, oh, no. Just like that to components. And then we've got our horizontal scroll bar and then horizontal scroll bar like so. Um, yeah, that's, this will probably work for us. Um, let's see. What does it like? Also, the scroll bar is not exported. I misspelt. Let's see. Um, I wonder if it's that it doesn't need. Hmm. There we go. Cool. Sorry, it wasn't. It didn't need to be. I guess is it destructured or um, yeah, exported like that because it's export default. Um, so anyway, there we go. We've got our horizontal scroll bar component. And in terms of styling, um, actually, we don't want to do that in our index.css. Let's just do some global reset here. So we'll just do margin zero, padding zero. Um, and I actually want the page to be really quite long so that there's, um, you know, the effect of um, being able to scroll down. So I'm just going to give the body a height of, let's just say, 5,000 pixels like so. If I hit save, I should be able to see there we've got a nice long page to scroll down on. That's on the body, of course. Um, and just to make it a bit easier on the eyes as well, I'll do a background color. And let's just pick <clears throat> a branched almond. Let's see if that's a bit better. Just take the edge off. There we go. Cool. So it shouldn't be as bright. Maybe even I can. Just turn that down a bit as well. There we go. Anyway, it doesn't matter too much. Um, and as I said as well, I'll actually leave a link below with the repository for all the code. If you don't want to um, sort of sit around it and sort of wait for it, you can grab that now um, and get playing around and obviously customize it to however you like with colors and, and all sorts of other things. Cool. So app.js, we've got our functional component. Um, and over here, we just want to uh, I guess return really just two divs. So one div, I'll give the a class name. Uh, yeah, class name of uh, let's say wrapper. Uh, I just need to close it off. And then inside that div, if we create some space, we'll just do another div with the actual bar itself. Um, uh, and that there was a little bit of emit where if you've got it, it sort of enabled. You can see we've got the emit abbreviation um, and it's really quite easy to create, as you can see here, a div with a class name of bar just by doing div dot bar. Obviously the dot being what after that will be the class name. Um, and that, that's all we need actually in the sort of the JSX. Um, I will just also give this an ID of bar. Um, let's see if it likes that. Just so again, we can target that um, where the because I think generally from uh, if you're using JavaScript, you want to use an ID and then obviously the class name is more for the styling, um, which we'll do in this instance. OK, so if we obviously looking at that now, there's nothing on the page because there's not really anything being rendered, just two empty divs. So let's go through our um, horizontal scroll bar dot CSS and um, sort of have a look at the, the styles that we can apply here. So I'm just going to have a look over here. And if you remember, we've got um, the class name of wrapper <clears throat> for the for that div. So we will give it, um, 
yeah, a position of fixed. We'll do a top zero, left zero, um, width 100%. And then just so that is always in front of, let's say, any nav bar or anything else that we might create, I'm just going to give it a Z index of two. Um, you know, that, that value might change depending on sort of if you've got other things um, sort of effectively in front of um, this progress bar. But yeah, you want it to be in front of anything else in terms of nav bars or, or anything you have at the top of the page that might also be um, in front of it. Um, and then we want to target the bar itself. And we want to give that a position, a position of absolute. So within there, again, the top zero, left zero, we'll do a width this time of 0%. Um, and this is sort of the key value that we'll be changing dynamically with JavaScript um, as the bar moves along. The, obviously, the width will be actually changing and it's kind of the other way around, right? The, the width, when it's 50%, the bar will look like it's sort of 50% across the screen. But actually, it's just taking up 50% of the this wrapper div here. Um, so, yeah, that's how the, the effect is done. Um, let's just give a height of 5 pixels, just so you can see it. And then a background dash color. Um, and I'm actually just going to use a hex code here. So I'll do 0 D C A F 0. I think that's kind of like a, a brightish blue that looks quite cool. Um, and that's what I used on my project. Okay, so we've got our CSS file here. Um, I'm just trying to remember. Let's see. Yep, we'll need to. Um, yeah, we just want to import that. Um, over here, so we'll just do import, and then hopefully dot slash should bring up the file. Uh, let's see. Dot slash. No, I know double dot slash was there, and then we wanted our horizontal scroll bar. Interesting. Why doesn't that? want to import and um, just check everything's looking okay horizontal scroll bar dot css it should come up um, but it's not so let's just do horizontal <coughs> scroll bar dot css oh css not scss like that um, that should be okay, all okay now. Uh, let me just have a look. So, yeah. So if I go to our styles, we know we've got a zero um, percentage width. If I set it to 50, we can see here now that the bar is 50% across the, the width of the page. Um, again, if I set it to 100, it's across the whole thing. Um, and as I said, this is the value that will be will be dynamically changing, basically. Um, but yeah, so there we go. We've got our CSS all hooked up to our, jar, um, our HTML, essentially, or the, the JSX. We've got our two divs here. Um, cool. So now it's just the JavaScript part. And what we want to do now is from React, um, also export use effect. So you can do that by just doing a comma and then curly braces. And then this will sort of grab use effect from React that's in the, the library. Um, and then bef inside our component, but before the return statement, um, we actually sort of want to build a function. And then we also want to actually use that use effect to call it um, dynamically as well whenever the user scrolls. So let's start with the, the use effect. So you can see here I've got a use effect snippet as well. So I'm just going to hit enter on that. Um, and we can see we've got first, second, and third. And what I normally do is actually just remove these values um, and sort of then start with an empty use effect, so to speak. And if you just hit save, you can see we've got everything there. So with inside the use effect, but before the return, we want to do a window um, dot add event listener like that. Um, we'll open up uh, is it some parentheses. We want to listen <clears throat> for the scroll event, like so, and that's in as a string. Then the second um, argument or sort of parameter is handle scroll. And this is going to be a function that we're going to create so that whenever the uh, user scrolls down the page, 
handle scroll will fire and that's what's going to be updating our um, uh, you know uh, the width of the bar so let me just do const handle scroll uh, we'll just do it as an arrow function and uh, let me for now console.log scrolled like that so what we should see is that as I'm scrolling down the page now if I go to inspect I'm just in Chrome and then the console as I scroll down and you can ignore all the errors don't worry about those uh, that's fine I'll just clear them oops like that and then if I scroll down we can see we've scrolled is being fired and for every scroll it fires that function effectively so as you can see it's firing a number of different times but that's cool so we know it's all hooked up and working um, if you do want to add a return we can do that also in here so we would just do um, basically take this and rather than returning that we'll just do window dot um, remove events listener and I think that's just um, sort of best practice when working with use effects certainly as you can see here we've got a dependency array and we almost don't need that because um, you know there's there's no dependencies um, for this we're literally just listening for the scroll event um, let me just see it should all be good just refresh and you see there we're still getting our scrolled um, and it, it's all working nicely um, yeah cool so that's that um, in terms of our handle scroll here's where the little bit of JavaScript and we're sort of going to do some calculations will come in um, so let's see what we want to do is we want to get um, a number of different values so we want how far the user has scrolled down the page so that is scroll y on the y-axis we want the sort of the client height in terms of the actual body how long the page is itself um, we also want the inner height uh, which I'll show you as a bit of a calculation um, and then we also calculate a percentage sort of using that difference between where the user is and how far uh, sort of along that page um, they are as well um, so yeah let me just create a load of values effectively um, or, or variables so we'll let pixels uh, pixels from top and that will equal window dot scroll y and what I can do is just add a console.log for each of these as we go and we can see um, obviously this function will get fired and we can see now pixels and plural from top like that and now if I close that and just let it refresh scrolled undefined hmm. we should be logging uh, the number of pixels from top it doesn't look like it's it's doing that anymore uh, let me just comment out this return here I wonder if that's no I just also refresh the page here <clears throat> um, let's just see it's undefined um, ah so scroll y so it's scroll y sorry that's why it's undefined so now if we do that again, we can see here we've got our pixels from top. Um, there is undefined within there. I think that is, we'll see, I do need the return. Um, okay, now we've got still one undefined, but anyway, we'll, we'll keep going. Um, it doesn't matter too much. Let's just see how we get on. So we've got our pixels from top. Next, we want the document height. So this is the, the height of the whole page. Um, and to grab this, we just want document um and obviously so you know there's obviously the the window and the document um attributes on the on the browser so the window is uh, you know sort of what they can see and then the document is the whole thing effectively um so document dot body and then we want the client height um and this is it good? if i hover over it does it say any more no um, but yeah, the, that is the client height. So this will be a fixed value and this is just how long the, the body is um, And we can see here it looks like yeah 5000 because if you remember when we set app.css was it no index.css We set the height to 5000 pixels. So it's literally just spitting out that value of how high um, Or how yeah the, the height of the document effectively. So we're going to let window height next and that is the height of uh, what's visible here. So this window 
Um, so not the whole document, not the whole thing, but literally from the top of here to the bottom, um, that height as well, because um, we need to add that into our calculation. So for that, we'll do window dot inner height, and that is the inner height, um, as I said, between sort of here. So again, this is a, a static value, and we can see this is 944. So that's 944 pixels, sort of top to bottom, um, that the user can see at any one time. Um, so then we want to calculate the difference um, here, like so. And for that, we want document height, right, which is the, the full height of the whole page, minus the window height. So what the user can see at any one time, like that. Um, and again, this is a fixed value, so it was effectively 5,000 minus 944. And then the, the final one that we want is a let percentage. Oops, percentage. And this is a, a little calculation, so I'm going to open some um, braces here. We'll do 100 times pixels, pic, oops, pixels from top, and then we want to divide that by the difference. And what we'll be able to see now is that if I put that percentage in our console.log, um, and I'm still not sure why it's actually, um, maybe I do need this dependency array. So let's just add that back in and refresh everything. And it should just be spitting out, you know, now a percentage of how far the user scrolled um, as they're scrolling down the page. So if we, if you can see this, it's, um, you know, a really load of decimal places, but certainly as I scroll all the way to the top, we get to zero. And then if I start to scroll back down, you can see we're at sort of, you know, one point something, two point something, 20 point something, and then all the way down to 100. And that's 100% effectively of what we're going to use it for. Um, so what you can do is if you want is to only use a couple of decimal places, but um, because we're hitting this scroll every single time, I'm just going to sort of use that as is. So, you know, we want to target um, over here in our CSS, we want to target this bar um, and this width here dynamically. So what we can do um, is again, a little bit of sort of, I guess, DOM manipulation, but we'll do document um, dot get element by ID. And if you remember, we're using the bar as ID um, for this. And then we want to do uh, dot style. So we're getting the, the styles of that. And then we want to update the width and that is gonna equal <coughs> um, the percentage but we want that um, as an actual percentage value. So I'm going to use a, a template literal string here. Um, let's just see a new keyboard. If I can get that. There we go. Uh, looks a bit strange. Okay, like that. So it's basically those back ticks. Um, if you've used template, template literals before, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, essentially we can use that um, and we can now input some JavaScript when we add a dollar sign and then curly braces and we want the percentage. And then after that, so outside the curly braces, but still within the back ticks, we just want to add a percentage sign here. Um, again, this is just good to do. You could just probably put percentage, but you know, if let's say we're starting at zero pixels or some other value, um, it's probably best practice just to make sure that this actually is a percentage value um, and not another type. So if it's obviously pixels, it would only go to 100 pixels, right? Um, yeah, so we want it as a percentage. And now if I start to scroll, um, we can see we've got our bar looking really quite nice and working. Um, and hopefully you can see that what I'll do is just change this to let's say 10 pixels, um, just to make it really obvious. Let's close this out. Uh, and we can see here as I'm scrolling down on the page, our horizontal scroll bar is going from left to right. Um, and then we get to the bottom and we go all the way back up to the top. Um, and it's really quite that, you know, that, that simple. Obviously, if the user changes how high um, the, sort of the pane is here, so that if you remember that inner height, that will be readjusted and recalculated as well. And then if I get to the bottom, it, it's the same thing. So, you know, we're basically doing all these calculations on the fly each time, but it doesn't seem to be sort of too intensive. Um, and certainly for my blog site that I'm working on, as I said, uh, there's no real noticeable difference in terms of page speed or anything. Um, it, as you can see here, it's a, a small amount of um, JavaScript 
and just with those styles dynamically sort of being updated, you get this cool effect. So yeah, that's kind of everything in terms of the React version of this horizontal scroll bar or progress bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, as I said, I'll leave um, a link to the GitHub repo down below. Uh, if you do use it in your project, I'd love to see, you know, sort of how, you, how you've done that. Um, feel free to drop a link below. And of course, if you've got any questions, I'd be more than happy to help. Yeah, so thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.